Hi, in this video we're going to talk about a beta distribution. So this is another one of those continuous distributions that's on the syllabus for exam P. Uh, we're going to, again, same uh, sort of notation. I'll use the Greek letter beta uh, as representing the beta distribution. It's a two-parameter distribution. We're going to use A and B as the parameters for the distribution. So uh, the symbols that you have written there, this is cap X follows a beta distribution with parameters A and B. Again, it's a two-parameter uh, distribution. The density function, I'm just going to list out the density function. I don't suggest that you commit that to memory. I'm going to make a comment that I did early. I made the same similar comment when we were talking about a gamma distribution. We're going to talk about proportionality in just a second. But this, I just wanted to show you, this is the definition of what the gamma, I'm sorry, of what the uh, beta distribution uh, density function is. Uh, the the Distribution function, just like with the gamma distribution, the density, the distribution function for a beta distribution. There's not really a simple uh, rule to follow for uh, calculating the uh, the the uh, distribution functions uh, at, at certain values. So I'm just not going to cover it. But I will give you the punchline for the expected value and the variance. The expected value is going to be the parameter a divided by the sum of the parameters a plus b. And then instead of, I said variance a second ago, but actually what I'm going to give you is a, a formula for the, uh, a rule for the second moment. So the, the rule for the second raw moment is, is uh, this expression. is uh, expressing the numerator, you get an A times an A plus 1. In the denominator, you get an A plus B times an A plus B plus 1. But of course, when you have the second moment and the first moment, then you can always use, uh, use those to get the variance of, uh, of the distribution as just the second moment minus the, uh, minus the square of the first moment. Now, in the, uh, in the expression for the density function that I have written there, I kind of, uh, I, I just kind of skipped over this, but it says for x values between 0 and 1. In other words, the support for a beta distribution is between 0 and 1. And a lot of times, it means that the, the values of that random variable x are between 0 and 1. And a lot of times, what the beta distribution is modeling is uh, an unknown probability you know, that you have. Maybe you're, you don't know what some probability is, and so you model that probability uh, with a random variable. And, and it, since, since it's representing a probability, it's going to be between 0 and 1. So a lot of times, again, what the beta distribution is, is doing is it's, uh, it's, it's the values of the beta distribution are oftentimes representing uh, some unknown probability. Okay, now let's go back to my, uh, the, the comment that I made about uh, proportionality with that density function right there. So that's a complicated looking density function. And, uh, but the fact of the matter is that uh, the first factor there in that, in that expression, the gamma of, that's a, the, the, uh, uh, the fraction there, where you have a gamma of A plus B in the numerator and a gamma of A times a gamma of B in the denominator, all of that is a constant. So this is saying that the density function is proportional to an x raised to an a minus 1 times a 1 minus x raised to a b minus 1. So that's what I remember about the, uh, that this is what I remember about the, the, the beta distribution. I don't remember the density function as it's written right there. I don't, uh, I don't know, I don't remember anything about the distribution function, but I remember that uh, the top right, uh, in the top right there, that I remember the density function is proportional proportional to an x to the a minus 1 times 1 minus x to the b minus 1. And then you should also commit to memory what this first and second moment rules are. The rule for the first moment is that it's the a parameter divided by a plus b. And the rule for the second moment is it's uh, the product of a times a plus 1 in the numerator and the product of a plus b and a plus b plus 1 in the denominator. Okay, so let's look at an example and, and um, uh, show you how to, how to use some of these, uh, some of these facts. So let's say that I'm given that a random variable cap X has a probability density function uh, that's uh, defined by the expression 60 X cubed times a one minus X squared times the square of one minus X uh, for X values between zero and one. And I want to determine the variance of uh, this random variable. So the first thing that I do is I recognize that density function as being uh, proportional to, in other words, I'm ignoring the 60, the constant of 60. It's proportional to an x cubed and then the square of 1 minus x. So I recognize that as the density function. Uh, if a density function is proportional to that, then it's a beta distribution. And the a parameter is, uh, well, the exponent of x, that 3, the x cubed, the exponent 3 there is a minus 1. So that would tell me that the a 
parameter is 4, and then the exponent of 1 minus x is b minus 1, but I'm given that that's 2 in this particular problem, so b minus 1 is 2, so b would be 3. So I'm dealing with a beta distribution with parameter a equal to 4 and b equal to 3, and then I can answer all these questions. The, the, this particular question, what's the variance? Uh, so I need the first and second moment to get the variance. And so I, I just use these the rules here. The first moment is the A value divided by A plus B. So A is 4, B is 3. So the first moment is a 4 over 7. And I just go through the arithmetic for the uh, for the second moment. The second moment would be a 4 times 5 in the numerator and a 7 times 8 in the denominator. Uh, so I, I get 20 over 56 as the second moment. 4 over 7 as the first moment, so I subtract off the square of 4 over 7 from 20 over 56, and I get this 0 .0306 number as the variance. So that's it. That's, that's, that's all I would do here. Now, if you don't recognize this and you don't, don't know these facts, you don't have these, uh, these uh, rules for the first and second moment committed to memory, then you're just going to have to go through the long way of doing this problem. So this is what I'm calling the alternative solution. Uh, the alternative solution would be just to calculate the expected value of capex and the and the second moment the, the expected expected value of capex squared directly. So let's let's just kind of go through that. It's not it's not too terribly difficult to do. It's just time consuming. And and uh, I think I think the, the the other way that we you know the the first solution was just very simple to do. But the first moment then, I would have to calculate uh, uh, an integral of x times the density function over the support of the random variable, which is from zero to one. And so uh, I could factor out the 60 and then the uh, combine the x and the x cubed to get x to the fourth, go ahead and square out the one minus x, I get one minus two x plus x uh, squared, uh, multiply the x to the fourth through, so uh, expand that expression. Just, you know, at this point, I'm, I'm you just, you got to just go through the integration, you know, term by term, do the integration, plug in the ones and, and the zeros. And for the first moment, you'll get uh, this 0.57 number. Uh, by the way, that 0.57 number is uh, the, the four sevenths that we calculated a little while ago. However, that's uh, neither here nor there. We're just assuming that we don't have those um, uh, those those rules committed to memory. Now I'd have to do the if I wanted to cat ca you know again I want to uh, determine the variance so I'm gonna need the second moment. So the second moment is the integral of x squared times the density function over the support of the random variable. Uh, once again I can factor out the 60 this time the x squared and the x cubed combined to give me an x to the fifth. Uh, I also again square out the one minus x, expand the in, uh, expand the the integrand and do a term by term integration. Uh, plug in zeros and ones, and you'll get the uh, you'll get a point three five seven number there. So the punchline here is that uh, it, the long way doing the integrations, the uh, first moment was point four five seven one number, the second moment is point three five seven number. So the variance being the first moment minus the square of the second moment, I get the exact same result that I had before. Again, I hope I can convince you that uh, uh, you know these are are not very hard formulas to commit to memory, and if you'll um, uh, if you'll recognize a beta distribution when you're given it, you're probably going to be asked a, a question similar to, to something like this. Okay, so uh, that's it for the beta distribution. I'll see you in the next video.